Is it possible to beat Terraria without dealing damage? Well, no, not really. There are several mandatory bosses that must be slain before you can beat the game. However, if we stretch our definition to not directly dealing damage, then maybe there's a chance. So, how do you beat bosses with this rule set? Well, for starters, we can still wear armor. And if said armor was made out of cactus, then any time an enemy were to make contact with my fashionable attire, they would take damage. Now, of course, this brings up another issue, because in order to deal damage, we'd have to take damage. Which makes boss encounters rather awkward. The plan is to do this. We just do this a bunch. <laughs> 100 damage! 100 damage! Now, you might be surprised to see Deer Cops here, because, well, it's an optional fight, which doesn't really align with their pacifist ideals. But I don't like to skip boss fights in my runs to make things tricky for us. And I'm sure it's fine to just give him a hug, right? Or maybe a few hundred. <laughs> this is gonna be so bad. Now, you might be wondering, why Deer Cops? Surely there are easier bosses to tackle first, right? Well, no, actually. For starters, this is the only boss in the game that does not despawn when the player dies, and when your only source of damage relies on you taking hits, this is huge. Secondly, in expert mode, this boss drops an incredibly useful accessory for this run. That was pretty good. We've done 500 damage so far. I really should bring up the shiny hunt again. I only need one hand on the, on the keyboard. I shouldn't have said it like that, but you guys get what I mean. While this would take a really long time, at least it wasn't difficult. It was just a matter of time before we had ourselves the bone helm. We're almost halfway, chat. Wait. What? Wait, what just happened? No, there's a timer? Since when? Oh, that changes everything. Uh, yeah, turns out if Deerclops is not defeated within 24 in-game hours, the boss just despawns. So not only did we completely waste the past 24 minutes, but we now also know our strategy needed some tweaking. Some of you might be inclined to recommend Thorns Potions, but since buffs lose their effects when the player dies, that wouldn't really be viable here. While we can't increase our DPS, we could prolong the amount of time the boss is taking damage for. You see, every time we die, we burn 15 whole seconds of the fight, and as you can see, we died a lot. This is where the nurse comes in. By nurse healing in the fight just before we die, we can save tons of time from a previous attempt, drastically increasing our damage potential. Even still, I didn't want to leave the next attempt up to chance, so I also decided to grab a bath statue, obtain some life crystals, and reforge my accessories. While I didn't have the gold to get everything warding, we still saw a great boost in defense. Okay, so we're only taking 30 damage now, per? That's so much better. We're gonna get so many more hits. Oh, and then I gotta move the nurse in. Very done 600 damage. The extra defense was working incredibly well. However, as I would soon realize, those extra points of defense came at a cost. It's only about four silver, so... <gasps> oh no. Chat. We just spent all our gold on reforges. <laughs> oh no. I didn't think about that. I don't know if we're gonna have enough. Despite the extra damage I did at the start, if we ran out of nurse heals anytime remotely soon, I still would not make it. However, if it came down to it, there was a solution. Although it's one I'd very much like to avoid. I might have to go back, sell some things for health, and then come back here. I feel so dumb. Okay, halfway done. 7.48 AM. At this pace, we can do this. We just have to hope we don't run out of nurse heals anytime soon. I'm out, I'm out. Oh no, I'm out already. And so it was time to make the long trek back to spawn to sell some items. Now, this hardly looks to be a time efficient solution at first glance, but trust me it is. With the amount of times we'd be dying trying to finish off that health bar, this method is leagues faster. I'm back for you, dear Klops. I think we're gonna make a chat. Come on. Two. One more. Yes! We did it! With this, we get probably one of the most important items for this run. The Bone Helm. Summons Shadow Hands to attack your foes. Let's put that on. We have damage. So huge. Absolutely vital. With the Bone Helm in our possession and the addition of a Thorns Potion, we went straight into the Eye of Cthulhu fight. During which, I made a really important realization. It's doing way more damage than I thought it would. Look how much damage we're doing. <laughs> I didn't realize this going into the challenge, but the Thorns Potion deals back the base damage of the attack, not how much damage the player takes. This is a huge distinction. For example, King Slime normally does 40 damage. 
With enough defense and damage reduction, the player can completely tank the hit, and yet the Thorns Potion will still inflict all 40 points of damage back at the boss. As a result, this fight was a breeze. With this in mind, I went straight to the Eater for the Worm Scar. Now you may have noticed I haven't actually equipped the Shield of Cthulhu, and to explain why, now would be a good time to clarify the rules of this challenge. For this run, any damage that is dealt directly to an enemy through the use of an input on my end is strictly off limits. And sadly, the Shield of Cthulhu falls into this category. Furthermore, I will not be using summons because that would be lame. I'll also avoid traps and fireworks because you've probably seen that before. Anyways, after several minutes of getting juggled by the boss, we had ourselves some more damage reduction. Things were going surprisingly well, at least until the Skeletron fight. Despite getting incredibly lucky with the Fallen Star taking out one of the hands, I just didn't have the health or damage to deal with this boss. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. I don't think we have enough damage. I think I might have to hit it here. Yeah, I think we do. It's gonna be risky, but I have to. Our damage relies heavily on us intentionally taking hits, so I had to fight to maintain the difficult balance of dealing enough damage to take out the boss in time, while also keeping our health at a safe amount. In the end, I couldn't really make it work. So, it was time to fish for more buffs. I got some cave fish for endurance potions, which will help our damage reduction, and most importantly, I did some lava fishing for the inferno potion. As of 1.4.4, the Inferno Potion debuff has been buffed to the Hellfire version, which deals significantly more damage than before. Dude, look how much damage we do. I'm just going into it. Look at that. That's so much damage. Crazy. Okay, well, Skeletron's done. We won't be using Bone Glove because it requires us to attack. I know probably a lot of people are going to ask. I'm not going to use it. I think it's a little too far. After looting the dungeon for the Cobalt Shield and Alchemy Table, it was time to get started on our Queen Bee Arena. And while doing so, I had an idea. So, what if for this fight, we just made a box and just hid in the box? At the time, I was convinced this would either be the dumbest or smartest way of taking down this boss. And well, there was only one way to find out which. And we're in. Uh, put this on, grapple, and turn. I can't turn it on! <laughs> oh no! Um, we got a abandoned ship here. Okay. <laughs> oh, really? What? I needed a heart reach? Oh, oh man. The Vs are just, are fueling me though. They're keeping me, oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Okay, Queen Bee's getting angry. Oh, this is gonna be close. I'm not grappled. <laughs> well. There you go. That's how you beat Queen Bee right there. That boss just dropped arguably the most important item in the run. I don't think this would be possible without the honeycomb, and this is entirely due to the wall flesh fight. Unlike the rest of the pre bosses, taking contact damage from the wall is not an option. But with the honeycomb, we could take damage from the significantly less scary attacks, like the lasers, and produce bees to damage the boss from a range. But before trying out this strategy, I figured we should swap out our cactus armor for the molten set, because again, the set bonus isn't nearly as impactful for this fight. Throw it in. Here we go. Buff. Alright, come on bees. Let's do it. Get it done. Get in there. Yeah, they're getting distracted on the hungry. That's a problem that I didn't really anticipate. Maybe if I get closer. <laughs> this is not going well. Okay, maybe we need a longer bridge. <laughs> this is what I'm starting to think here. Yeah, if we're not close up, we're getting no damage. But I can't go close is the problem. Man, this is gonna be rough. Sadly, the lasers in Hungary were still dealing loads of damage to us. So our current strategy needed to be switched up a bit. I still needed the bees, but they needed to be activated by something that wouldn't diminish our health bar as much. The answer, sand. Luckily for us, this accessory doesn't just trigger when getting hit by an enemy. So if we set up these stations along our elevator, I could drop sand on top of myself, dealing just one damage, and spawn as many bees as I could before the boss cut up to me. And while we were extremely close to running out of room, the plan went off without a hitch, and we made it into hard mode. Where we got extremely lucky with the traveling merchant. Come on. <sighs> okay, this is kind of huge. Obviously, we're not going to use it for its damaging capabilities, but it has this, this guard, which I think is fair. That's fair game. As long as we don't throw it, 
I should mention that while this shield can definitely be used as a weapon and has a parry function, these would both contradict the rules we set at the start, so we will avoid doing either. Now the next question is armor. Which set, if any, can passively deal damage to enemies? Well, on their own, unfortunately none of them. In order for the titanium set bonus to activate, the player must strike an enemy with a weapon, so that's a no-go. Or at least that's what I thought until I went to record the b-roll for this challenge. Turns out, the tooltip is just incredibly misleading and you don't actually need to attack. But let's just pretend it doesn't work and move on. The only other option at this point is Orc Alchem Armor, which fortunately for us works a little differently. So, I've been told, I have not tested this, but... Wait. Oh! <laughs> not only does the Bone Helm activate it, but the bees do as well. So, pretty strong, as you can see. Um, and with that, I think we're ready for our first boss fight. Well, not quite. Before then, I obtained the Star Cloak. For those unfamiliar, it spawns fallen stars that damage enemies whenever the player takes damage, making it incredibly useful for this run. Additionally, we got some wings and made an arena. Before attempting mech bosses, it would be wise to swap out our Bone Helm for something not so outdated. If we can manage Queen Slime with our current gear, we could do just that. Uh, so we want to play, like, this range. Oh, yeah, we're not going to get a lot of hits. It's really just Shadow Hands. How much do we take when we just sit here, though? 45. That's still a lot. Oh, 58. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is good. Okay, we just got to get hit by projectiles near the boss. And then the damage goes. You want the stars to fall directly on the boss. All right. Uh, What happens now? We could just sit here. Wait, do we tank? Oh, I think we do. Oh, yeah, we'll stand right in the midst of all this. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. That gives us one of the most important accessories of this run. So I'll put that thing on. You guys will see. This thing, basically just a way better bone helm. Pierces, better range. The projectiles bounce. They do way more damage. It's just a straight up upgrade. Next up is Destroyer, and this one looks pretty scary. It's a timed boss fight, has a massive health bar, and can deal crazy damage if we get hit by the head. So I had to do something a little different than usual. Remember our Queen Bee strategy? Well, turns out you can do the exact same thing here. With enough defense, damage reduction, and regen, you can completely AFK this boss in extra mode. By allowing yourself to constantly get hit by the segments, you can do super consistent damage and very rarely get hit by the head, if at all, thanks to the immunity frames the player gets when taking damage. Definitely going to be the easiest uh, mech boss, I can tell you that. There's no way anything's going to be easier <laughs> than this. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't quite get away with the same strategy in Prime because of the spin attack. And without a dash, I needed to rely much more heavily on my grapple. But this ended up working surprisingly well. I put up my guard to purposely take damage from the weaker limb attacks, spawning in stars and dealing thorns damage, and then grappled around the stronger attacks that we couldn't tank as well. Nice. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, so twins are next. Now this one's going to suck because the twins don't like to get close to you. And most of our damage comes from being close to our enemies. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> it can't hit it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's really bad. That's really bad. That's like worst case scenario. We don't get any damage in. We did it like twice. But thankfully, there was no need to worry. Thanks to our absurd survivability, whenever the bosses swap to the charge portion of their attack pattern, I could just sit there and tank, dealing back tons of damage to the boss. Enough to take them out with minutes to spare. That's crazy. <laughs> Look at all the laser, the stars. <laughs> Sick. Alright. I've always known tanky builds are really strong in this game, but it was still wild to see how effective this was. With the addition of the chlorophyte armor, it would only get stronger. Wait, I think we just tank this. Wait. Oh yeah, we just tank this. Okay, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll save us all some time. <laughs> Okay, I think I, I think I go in for a tank here. Just finish it off. There we go. Look at that. First try. Uh, but, oh, I didn't even mention it. We just got, like, one of the best accessories of the run. No, probably the best. And I'll show you guys why. With the addition of the Spore Sack, I was now dealing over 1,000 damage per second against Golem. Without even lifting a finger. And once again, we had the bulk to not really care about what the boss was doing. That being said, there is quite a big drawback to the spore sack. The spores can only spawn on blocks or walls. So for fights where we are in the air a lot, like Fishron, 
it's quite ineffective. However, we can bypass this by creating the architectural wonder you see before you. In addition to its stunning aesthetic, spores now can spawn on the walls basically anywhere throughout the fight. And while Fishron was much too strong to tank, after acquiring the ninja gear from the dungeon, maneuvering around it was no trouble at all. And before long, the boss was no more. While this challenge has many drawbacks, there are some upsides. Since we don't use any weapons on bosses, I don't really have to use the mouse. So I could farm the Fishron fight over and over while doing something else, like shiny hunting. So that's exactly what we did for three hours. Yeah, uh, RNG was not very kind to us. Anyways, with our new wings, I was feeling ready to take on the Empress. Thankfully, this boss doesn't care if you're outside the hallowed biome, so we can save a bunch of time by reusing our Duke Fishron Arena for this fight. Oh, and we have Thorns Potion too, so actually we want... Ideally, we, we take contact damage when we do get hit. Wait! Wait, that's insane. That's the strat. The contact damage is nothing on well, this boss. Eight damage was oh, I was taking. So if I just go in the middle, where there's <laughs> that is insane. I would you would you would never know such a thing because why would you ever want to do that? Oh, not only are we getting more damage, but we're taking less. With our new strategy, the boss was a pushover, and it's dead. <laughs> Let's go! And although it was rather awkward to prevent the Wyvern from spawning in the cultist fight, with some careful maneuvering, we could manage thanks to our Thorns Potion, which made the fight no trouble at all. So we forged ahead, ready for the pillars. And thankfully, our setup lends itself super well to farming and crowd control, so they were a piece of cake. And just like that, Moonlord was all that remains. From the get-go, I knew that there was a very high likelihood that this boss would be the run killer. For those unaware, Moonlord has a built-in DPS check. If you can't deal enough damage to destroy the healing clot spawned by the boss, you'll never make any progress on that health bar. And while our DPS has been surprisingly solid throughout this run, I still wasn't convinced it was up for the task. However, we do have an easy way out. For those that saw my sand gun playthrough I did a few years back, you'll know that if you heal with the nurse, you can prevent the debuff that allows Moonlord to self-heal. That being said, this method is quite cheesy, and after polling my viewers, we determined we should avoid resorting to such methods unless absolutely necessary. Upon starting the fight, I quickly noticed some problems. For starters, the Starveil is pretty useless against the hands. After taking damage, by the time the Fallen Stars get low enough, the hand is long gone. We also didn't seem to deal nearly enough damage to prevent the self-heal. After about 8 minutes of seeing no progress in the fight, I tried to position myself further from the boss. At first glance, this probably looks dumb, because we severely limit what can get damage in on the boss. However, because the healing orb starts at the player, the further we are from the boss, the more spores the orbs would have to travel through, to the point where we could actually take them out now. It was gradual, but progress was being made. Eventually, we popped the hands. Okay, this is where this is where it gets scary. <laughs> Our spores can't hit the top eye. We're once again at a standstill. I just had to hope we could somehow DPS race the boss. I flew up to the top eye to get as much damage as possible, navigated around the death ray, and traveled as far away as I could to give ourselves the best chances of taking out the clots before they could reach Moonlord. And to my surprise, while inconsistent, it was working. However, it was painstakingly slow. Oh god, <laughs> it's got so much out left still. <laughs> no. So slow, in fact, that I burned through multiple sets of buffs that I prepared before the fight. Okay, how dumb, scale 1 to 10, would it be to try and go in and craft more buffs? <laughs> I'm, th I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm thinking zero here. I think that's pretty big brain if you ask me. Yeah, we're just gonna have to tank that. Oh! Okay, we're, we gotta do it. We gotta, we gotta make a play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are so screwed. Alright, let's take our time here. Let's get some... Get some iron skins. <laughs> oh, this is so ridiculous. Let's get some let's get some regen. We got a life force. Oh, we sure do. We sure do got a life force. Ah uh, yeah, we use all three. Let's go. Oh now we're cooking. Oh yeah, you guys see that regen right now? After nearly 30 minutes of focus on the top eye, we had opened up the core. Nice. Core's open, boys. Let's go. Unfortunately, things just got way harder. The strategy we used to take out the top eye wouldn't work here, because once the top eye is popped, Moonlord now spawns in the clots at a much faster rate. I could just barely keep up with them before, there was no way I could do it now. Despite this, for the next 10 minutes, I did my best to find some sort of way forward. Unfortunately, to no avail. 
So, with no options left, it was time to resort to the nurse. With carefully timed nurse heals, I was finally able to make a dent in the health bar. And for a while, it looked like we could pull this off. But that's when our buffs ran out. Again. At this point, we've been fighting the same Moonlord for an hour. Now you're probably thinking, okay, just go craft some more like you did last time. However, that's not exactly possible, because I used everything we had last time. So as painful as it was, as soon as our buffs ran out, I no longer had the sustainability to keep it going, and I couldn't stay near the nurse and spam heals without her dying on me. While it hurts to have lost this hour-long attempt so close to the finish line, I knew that if I went back in with enough buffs, we could pull this off. So after about an hour of prep, we got the run back. After half an hour, we were back where we were before. This time, however, I had prepared some walls to allow the spore sack to get damage in on the core, which drastically sped up the fight. Oh, the spores are going in right now, dude. Yeah, that was a very good call with the walls there. Heal. Uh-oh. Imagine I choked it there because <laughs> of a misclick. And... Easy dub. Easiest dub of my life. Easiest dub. Expert mode Terraria completed without ever dealing damage. Hope you all enjoyed. Subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.